The global retail sales with cosmetic and personal care products totaled 460 billion US dollars last year. In 2027, these sales will already amount to 580 billion US dollars. There is great interest in developing products that are in harmony with nature. And this goes in particular for the up to 100 trillion microorganisms which live in and on us and are referred to as microbiota or microbiome. The cosmetics industry has realized the fact that we have to take good care of our skin microbiome. Therefore, it comes as no surprise that products have been launched in the market in recent years which always come with a claim in respect of the microbiome. You come across many products with a label like microbiome friendly or nice to the microbiome. Many of us do not know, however, that this claim is not based on a methodological consensus, and this makes it really very difficult for consumers to assess such claims. Today, I would like to present to you a new predictive skin microbiome model, which we have called skin microbes. It is a model which consists of the eight most important skin microorganisms and demonstrates the interaction of these microorganisms with cosmetic ingredients so that the claim of microbiome friendliness can be scientifically verified. Before I now present the model in detail, I would first like to describe a few facts on the skin and the skin microbiome. With a surface area of 25 square meters, the skin is the largest human organ and it protects us from dehydration and pathogenic germs. The skin is made up of different layers. At the surface, there is the so-called epidermis, below it is the dermis, with various organs such as sweat glands, sebaceous glands, but also hair follicles. By numbers, the microbiota are most widespread on the skin surface, but they also protrude to lower skin layers. Molecular genetic analyses have shown how, di how diverse the microbiota is, and that it differs enormously from person to person. The microbiota is exposed to the impact of many influences. This includes the way we are born, our hormone status, the use of cosmetic products and also our nutrition. All these influences have an effect on the skin microbes and it is important that the skin microbiome maintains its natural balance. There are not only differences from person to person, there are different regions on the body populated by different bacteria. In fact, we have moist, warm skin, for example in the armpit, where we find in particular bacteria of the type Staphylococci, but also Corin bacteria, which may be responsible for the smell. On the forehead, in the face, we have an oily, sebaceous skin. Here we find in particular those bacteria which belong to the cutibacteria and Staphylococcus. On the dry skin, for example of the lower arm, we come across the greatest diversity and variability in the course of life. Here we find Corin bacteria and cutibacteria, but also Streptococcus. You see that the complexity of this skin microbiome makes the development of a model to predict the interaction with the ingredients more difficult. And it is important that we do not only have one model to test the interaction of ingredients with individual bacteria, but we need several interacting bacteria because this is the only way to make a statement on the interaction with active ingredients on a truly scientific basis. Bacterial reproduction is the precondition for interaction, and the bacteria on our skin form an interactive network. They can generate metabolic products, metabolites, that is, which are the basis of interaction. In fact, some microorganisms produce metabolites that others need to survive. This is what we refer to as synergism. However, there are also microorganisms producing metabolites which inhibit others in their effect. We call this antagonism. Moreover, there are other communication and interaction possibilities such as competition, but also the interruption of communication. Therefore, it is extremely important for us to develop a model allowing different skin microorganisms to interact with each other. 
How has this been implemented in concrete terms? In methodological terms, we had to break new ground. This is why we teamed up with international experts, for example, the experts at the Center for Microbiome Innovation in San Diego. However, together we decided to develop a model in which eight of the most well-known and most important skin microorganisms of different regions can be reproduced together. Two things have to be specified for the determination of the effect of cosmetic ingredients on the microbiome. On the one hand, the bacterial reproduction, and on the other hand, the bacterial diversity. What does the concrete methodology look like in the laboratory? First, the was the great challenge of finding media constituents that allow the simultaneous reproduction of the eight skin microorganisms. We successfully achieved this in a slightly acid pH environment. Not all the bacteria of the skin like oxygen, and this is why Mrs. Dagatz performs the inoculation at an anaerobic workstation. The test substances are also added here. This is followed by the incubation of the co-cultures. We use a high-throughput microbioreactor for this. 48 small vessels are in one disk in which the co-cultures with the test substances are agitated. This incubation takes 48 hours. After the incubation, we determine the different bacteria by way of a genetic fingerprint. We need the DNA for the genetic fingerprint. The DNA is also isolated by a high-throughput methodology by means of a so-called magnetic particle processor. Eventually, the specific DNA of each bacterium is quantified. For this step, we use a methodology, the so-called qPCR, with which we are still very familiar from the corona diagnostics. The results are available after two hours. We have thus created a high-throughput methodology enabling us to quickly analyze our active ingredients in parallel with great precision and a short throughput time. So much for the methodology, but what do the concrete results look like? The following figure shows the results of the qPCR as a measure of the reproduction. One control substance and two test substances were tested. The qPCR was plotted in a logarithmic scale, and you see that 800 million bacteria already exist in the control after 48 hours. The addition of an antimicrobial substance, however, led to a strong reduction of the overall growth by a factor of 1000, whereas the addition of a mild surfactant had obviously no effect on the total number of cells in the culture. The cell total is one thing, but what about the distribution? Have all the species survived? This is shown in the following picture. You see by way of the different colors, which are specific for the respective skin species, that all microbes have survived in the control. By contrast, the addition of the antimicrobial substance has led to drastic reductions in the number of species. We only see one species which has survived. This is different when it comes to the mild surfactant. The addition of the mild surfactant did not have any drastic consequences for the distribution and diversity of the skin microbes. How can these results, which we've, which we've just seen, now be translated into a quantifiable statement on the microbiome interaction? First, we have to ask ourselves what microbiome-friendly actually means. The experts agree that a substance is microbiome-friendly if it does not significantly change either the reproduction or the diversity of a microbiome. This means that we need two dimensions for the evaluation of substances, as you can see plotted in the following evaluation matrix. Along the x-axis, it is the reproduction, which would be unchanged as shown in the middle, increased towards the right and decreased towards the left. Along the y-axis, you have the measure of diversity. And here we use a so-called marker, which we call Bray-Curtis distance. This is a measure for the inconsistency of two samples. It is zero when they are comparable, when they are identical, it is one when they are highly dissimilar. By testing a large number of control substances, we succeeded in defining four categories of microbiome interaction. These are microbiome-friendly, microbiome-promoting, microbiome-changing, and microbiome-disturbing. As an example, you now see the two test substances which we analyzed before. 
These are firstly the antimicrobial substance, which, we, which was tested in three different concentrations, and you see that all three substances are microbiome disturbing, that is to say, very much change growth and diversity. Moreover, you see that the medium and low concentration of the mild surfactant is microbiome friendly, while the highest concentration also exhibits microbiome disturbing effects. Apart from the skin microbes model for normal skin, we are currently developing models mapping specific conditions of the skin. And one specific condition is the acne-prone skin. Why is acne so important and crucial for us? Globally, 9% of the population are suffering from acne. 85% of adolescents and among your friends and acquaintances, there will certainly also be many people suffering from acne. The market for acne is significant. It amounts to 5.9 billion US dollars in 2023 and is growing by 5%. It will even reach 9 billion euros in 2032. The acne-prone skin is characterized by a strong change of the microbiome. Here, a subspecies of the Cutibacterium acnes prevails in particular, which produces metabolites triggering inflammatory reactions. Precisely for this oily, sebaceous and acne-prone skin, we have developed a specific model containing four different microorganisms. Two Staphylococci, one Cutibacterium acne strain and one Cutibacterium acne strain isolated from acne patients. We also work with artificial sebum and artificial skin flakes integrated in, in the model to enhance the predictive capability of our model. This model enables us to identify substances which can specifically trigger or inhibit the reproduction of the subtype Cutibacterium acne of acne. We are also aiming to further enhance the predictive capabilities of our models. And this includes the combination of the skin microbiota with artificial skin tissues. Here it is a major advantage to have truly competent colleagues in Ebonic Skin Institute in Singapore. They provide us with these artificial skin tissues. The combination of artificial skin tissues and skin microbiota enables the trilateral interaction among the skin cells, the skin microbes and the cosmetic substance which we would like to analyze. In sum, it is safe to say that with the skin microbes model, we managed the challenge for the first time to cultivate eight different skin microorganisms together. The established method offers high throughput, and we achieve results on microbiome interaction that are scientifically evidence-based. We now use the technology to develop new cosmetic ingredients with differentiation potential for our customers and eventually also for all of us as consumers.